Okay, we're going to have a quick, uh, in a quick announcement that will be made by a PCT member, Untabi Seng Dimbani, and she'll also be introducing the DSG. Amanda, Amanda, Ikama la makosiga zimalibongwe, Ikama la makosiga zimalibongwe. Eh, sanbona ni nonge, Ikama la mungu nsabi sing, Latimbani. I'm the provincial organizer of EFF in Gauteng. Uh, my duty is very simple. I'm just going to introduce you the panel today that is going to talk to you and address you and have a dialogue with you. Um, the panel that is here in front of me, I'm having Usis Tandiwe Mbambala. It would be nice when you stand up and greet them. <laughs> okay. Um, the next one we have uh, Os Julia Mukwili. Um, we also have uh, Aus Mapule Mohale. Amanda, Amanda. <laughs> All right. Uh, we also have um, Aus CBC. Is Aus Sikhe here? Amanda.
My name is Tidisa Wudibe. Viva EFF Viva! Viva! Viva EFF Viva! Viva! Amanda! Away to! Our DSG, the head of GBV in our national level, Commissar Popi Mailula. It's that time now where we're going to be having the panel discussion. We want it to be as interactive as possible because there's no one here who has more experience of what a woman is. So all of us are going to weigh in and teach each other about how to best navigate the barriers that life gives to us as women, as black women. So we are going to start with introductory statements from the panel and then we will go into the discussion and then, yes. So. Okay, so the first panel member that will be giving their opening statements is the founder of Kwanile Foundation, CHSBC. Sanmonanbo <laughs> Mama EFF to Mela EFF to Mela EFF to Mela to Mela to Mela Webo Mama to Mela Webo Mama to Mela Webo mama to mela, to mela, masibo pe. San Monani, good afternoon. In front of you is Usiche Sibisi. I am the founder of Kwanele Foundation. Because I'm thinking, out of all colors of the sweaters, I'm wearing a red one today. <laughs> We've got a black set sweater and we do have a red sweater. And I'm like, oh well, isn't those Yenzeka? Firstly, I want to thank e e EFF to say, as a political party, you were able to invite a non profit organization that stands against gender based violence and femicide to come and speak, share with you, and educate the issues that we are faced with in our country as a whole. So for that, I would like you to clap for yourselves. 
I always say to people that Squanele Foundation, we are not affiliated to any political party, but we work with all political parties. And when they call us, we avail ourselves. I must applaud the EFF though. EFF, I think it's Ward 60. Each time we have a case at the Alexandra Magistrate Court, they don't need to be invited by Guanile Foundation. But when they see a poster on our social media platform, and when you ask yourself, what case are they there for? They are following the same case that Guanile Foundation is following. So I want us to clap for the EFF members on the ground. There's one case in particular at the Alexandra Magistrate Court that we've been following for the past two years now. Usin Dimguni, a black young South African girl, Umzulu. She was dating a man, of course. Let me not say of course, because she could have dated a woman if she wanted to. But she was dating a man from Bangladesh. And this man from Bangladesh decided that he had the power and the authority to take her life. We've been following that case for two years. And what do I mean? On the day Sindim Guni was killed, Guanele Foundation was called to the scene. Unfortunately, I was not, we were not available to be there that same day. The next day, I was in Sindim Guni's house. I met Sindim Guni's family. Guanele Foundation went to Sindim Guni's funeral in Yucasela. From then, because Guanele Foundation, ours is about restoration and rehabilitation psychologically and legally. We've been walking the journey Alexandra Magistrate Court with the family Yagamguni and the Ward 60 EFF members. There was a time since Alexandra Magistrate Court Sikoshwa Tua, they don't want us here anymore. Because we are too loud. And we were like, but what does our loudness have to do with it? Because we have seen that the very alleged perpetrator has special preferences with employees. What is going on? There was a time that I and I'm sharing this, just a brief summary, so that you understand. We work with all political parties. We do not phone political parties to say, hello, come and work with us. No. They see the work we do on social media. They avail themselves. And that is why I say, Iguanele Foundation, we are only three years old, but our voice, Iyang Tusa, Iguanele Foundation has multiplied beyond itself. It is, it is a vehicle that is being driven, and which is a vehicle that, let me tell you now, Iguanele Foundation, we are here to make sure that we amplify the voice of victims of gender-based violence, those who can no longer speak for themselves. And those who are still alive, we do that. So I want you to clap again for Eward 60 year EFF. <laughs> do you know, court? I wish one day in court. We will have brigaders from Department of Community Safety. Then we'll have EFF. Then Asas, go to Guanelle, no EFF are they one? Because sometimes we're wearing red hoodies, sometimes we're wearing black hoodies. But we are there, we are under one mission. And that for me is beautiful. I want to say this quickly. Iguanele Foundation, we've been blessed. We are three years old. One, two, three. We've been blessed because we now have partnership and we work with the Pan-African Parliament. And the reason why I need to make sure that I make it known is because our very people on the ground, sometimes they don't acknowledge Iguanele Foundation. Sometimes they turn a blind eye to us. But if the work of Iguanele Foundation is that uh, amplified enough that we are recognized in the Sadek region, that means there is something right that we are doing. I must say, congratulations to the EFF for your 10 years of undisputed or unbroken struggle. Because it's beautiful to see a young man. I mean, you look at CIC, Honorable CIC. The work that is done is amazing. He, they've tried to bring him down. They've tried smear campaigns. There's nothing under the face of the sun. They've never tried to bring him down. But they didn't know that he's a seed. 
They tried to bury him, not knowing that he's a seed, that behind that fertile soil, he is germinating and he is growing. And that's why EFF is what it is today. We look up to people like that because when people think of Sithya Smisi, but oh, Sithya Smisi, yo, she's controversial. Oh, Sithya Smisi, yo. Public domain. It is the very women that will share things on social media. Yeah, there were memes made about me. Why did he choose her and not us? This brings me to say sometimes it's us women that hurt each other. It is us women. Yiti abafazi sometimes that her bring hurt to each other because instead of wanting to find out, Uguti, are you okay? I'll give an example. Utandiwe phoned me. When I was trending, hey, everything was sitless busy. That, sitless busy. This, one minute to show Nilu sitless busy. One minute to say, Uso Ote, look, okay, a check, Ubo Shiwe, I bought 2020. Ooh, I'm a checky. One minute, I used to be an intruder. Hi, one minute. Hey, I'm a trend, I'm a trend. Can I tell you, Tandiwe would phone me just to say, leadership, I'm full of guys who are going I want to know what are you fine. I'm not in I'm not in Cali. I tell leadership, give me your house address. We want to come and see you. I'm not an EFF member. I'm not any political uh, party member. But I had a sister in Utandiwe who stood up and said, Tina, we care. <laughs> Utandiwe, they would call me to say, okay, can't we give you a weekend off yes, just for you to be okay? The question is, which type of women do you have that surround you? Are you surrounded by women who will laugh at things about you that they hear and read, which they've not verified? Even if it's true. Are you surrounded by women who will continue wanting to amplify into abangaya zingawe? Are you surrounded by women who think they know your life better than you? Who are you surrounded with? Because you need to surround yourself named Tiga. Women who will stand and say, Tina, no mabanga, tini bateni, no manga bikini, so no manga baksi kini. So we will stand by her in prayer. We will stand by her behind the scenes. Let the world talk. Let the world talk, but Tina, siamazusile. We know the work of usile. Because the straight thing is, once a bad story comes out, Nishashen Koshwe. You forget the goodness and the good things that that person or that organization does. And you want to amplify Ubungo Lababo. I am a GBVF activist. I am a GBVF activist. And the reason is because I was once a victim myself. I survived it all. I'm that girl when I was 16, I was given away to the church. I'm that girl when I was 16, I stayed in a place called a mission house where I was exposed to things that I wasn't supposed to when I was the age of 16. I'm that girl who was subsequently taken to Nigeria, human trafficked. I only realize now, hey, hmm? I'm that girl where people look at me and they say, and I'm thinking, understanding is a problem. That is why through that experience, Iguanele Foundation, every offer speaks to the pain I went through. My pain has become your gain. That is why we have an office called Kwanele Mfundisi. Because we are not against churches, we are not against pastors, we are not against the religious sector, but we are there to bring forth restoration and rehabilitation to people who were once like me or people who are still like me who are being abused at the hands of pastors, be it emotionally, physically, psychologically. And how do we do that through our lawyers and through our psychologists? I'm that girl who got married and got widowed and disinherited of everything. I'm that girl who used to drive the latest model X6 I'm that girl who drive the X6, I drive the E-class, I drive the Jeep. And then the next thing I'm in laws, I have figure but tata gonke. And I had to leave Bangshia at that time. My, my, my daughter was two years old. My son was six. I'm that girl who had to fight to rebuild herself. 
And the only way I could fight to rebuild myself is because of the women that surround me. Do you understand? And that is why we have the office called Kwanele In-Laws. Because that office does to women what I wish someone had done for me. We advocate and stand against the abuse of women when their husbands have passed on. Legally, psychologically. Also men when their wives have passed on because they also experience the same. Then the last two offices we have is Gwanelin Tizo and Gwanelin Tombo. I'm an educator by profession. And education now at Lassini has become more administrative. So we've begun gender-based violence and femicide dialogues within the school at the grassroots level from ECD level, early childhood development. We have a tool that Kwanele Foundation has created. We have a tool that Kwanele Foundation has created where when we enter an ECD center, we are able to use that tool to provoke conversation with these little children that you think can talk. And my, we find out a lot at that level. We find out a lot. So that is why my message today is, before you judge her, do you know her story? Before you look at her and look down on her, do you know her story? Have you taken time out to say, I am going to want to find out? Yes, I might not be close to her. I might not know her, but she's a woman like me. She's got pain like me. And chances are what I went through or what I'm going through, now we are going through it. The only difference is that when I was Ziwa, I'm not a celebrity, trust me. It's the work that I do as an activist that has made me known. So anything that Sikhisa BC does, he are trend the next day. Sometimes, I've got a twin somewhere in this world. Because I could be standing here, man, addressing you women. But Women. Let's start by loving ourselves. Self-love. And how do we start by loving ourselves? It's by facing facing our own dirt within ourselves. We are so afraid to be alone. We are so afraid to sometimes to come phone to the Jalo when you phone yako, it's either a phone. Nella banta bang a phone nelly. Waste your time. We are waste our end. And most of the people that you phone book yako. Most of the people that you phone don't phone you. Abana skatsa yako. What at the phone? No phone. No ma. King Obu phone. No composite. In the bang omu nyuma ama. If I una a time, sir, sir, fama, please call. Bese mama phone ela. Eh, who three? Le bari the latest one, two, three, one, two, three. Let's take time out as women to introspect within ourselves, to say what in me is filthy, what in me is broken that needs to be cleansed, that needs to be re rebuilt. Because let me tell you something, hurt people hurt people. You find that the very people who are trolling me, the very people who write bad things about me, abang tugayo on a daily, they are hurt themselves. Yes, because mungu tu yapega social media yego nile foundation. Once wakulu musi kesi, kona banya bazo commenta indonga ya zepegele. But I wena do mazani mpa lautule. I wena na metla makula lautule. And you think to yourself, no, the person, the writer, the one behind, umu tu lop behind this thing, is hurt. Upugi lenga parati. Because hurt people hurt people. If they were not broken within, they wouldn't want to inflict the pain on someone else. So sometimes you learn to forgive and you learn to accept apologies that you may never receive. Because what if that apology never comes? Ulogumeli apology, uta mwiti, uta atingi akolisa. Mainga figi apology, mtaka tedi, uzo fopatu depression. Sometimes you deal with yourself, you fix your hurt, you fix your brokenness, and you let go. And you forgive not for Omunyu Muntu, you forgive for your own inner self and your own peace. Uguti no mumbona leo muntu. You have nothing against them, but because of Unuk Pila. Tinaba Fazi, most of us, you are stressed and depressed because Ukwatile Guti, until they say sorry, Yikwatile Kamutoya, I don't want to see him, I don't want to see her, until she says sorry. What if she never says sorry? 
What if they don't even know that they've hurt you? What if they don't even want, oh, what if they don't care that they've hurt you? Are you going to wait for the rest of your life for a sorry? This is life. You live once. You live once and you will never come back again. In closing, we went to a funeral the other day in one of the Sadiq countries. And <clears throat> when we drove in, after the funeral, we go to the cemetery. There was a sign that said, welcome. A big sign. Welcome. We went in. Funeral happens. They bury. After the burial of the, fun after the funeral, what do we do? We drive out, isn't it? So while we were driving out, there was a big sign at the gate written, we were once like you. Let that sink in. We were once like you. That for me sobered me up to say, eh? Eh? No, one day these people, the one we've just buried, now, nah, but one day they drove in to bury someone else and they drove out. One day it will be me where you guys tomorrow it will be you. But for the fact that you are still breathing, for the fact that you still have life with you in you, why not learn to heal yourself? Love yourself. Forgive Abandu for yourself. Live a happy life. We wani. Be happy, guys. You live once and this life can never be replaced ever again. No mungayen yang any, no mungayen zani. Each China can do everything, but in Tabaga was we and some pef mulo. Abaguazo, we some pef mulo or moon too. So why not learn to say, you know what? I say this to myself every day. Get to see this, we start. Yes. Omega. Unefika. Yebu nezinga. Yebu na matanga makulu. But umega shekel. Besen gis buengi taibo. Tomazane yes pongo. Are you hot? Hot like a heater, like a bomb. Besen gis buengi tamesho wako. Get to you know when God created me. I swear to my parents took time. No, they took time. Beba nga chakang. Bungu nga si le. One, two, three, six, thirty. No, they took time. You know, they took time because when, when my father, Ubaba me me it had to go to, you know, it had to take time, go to terminate, you may care, you may have And then when, and then, and then, and then, Guapumusi, Guapumusi, and when God said, when Sisha was born, Ungunungula Zangati in the book of life, Mengzalo Amina, what's Ungunungulu? Law. She's going to be bold like a lion. She's going to be fearless. This one, she will be, she will born and she'll only realize her mandate. Mega over 30. Ah, oh, I'm 38 now. Cornelia Foundation is three years old. And Sister CBC is saying, I walk proudly as an activist of gender-based violence and femicide. You hate me, oh guaku. You love me, oh guaku. But there's no in-between with Sister CBC. But until we achieve a gender-based violence and free Africa for all, we must never remain silent. I am so blessed and I thank UDSG and Mambopi that she is leading HBV. You know, Mambopi or DSG, EFF, was telling me, how oh, I'm always with you in court. I'm like, no, I don't, I don't, I, I don't. I don't remember. But that, that, that for me showed me the humility behind her. Uguchi, when she's in court with us, she's a foot soldier and I. She's not to DSG at that moment. Who is foot soldier Nati? Who shout her Nati? Who ends a young kid or Nati? It was the first time today where we literally introduced and introduced at DSG. I'm like, hey. I'm like, eh? So, do you see how favor locates when you're humble? 
God will choose you. With all the noise and the cloud and the nonsense that is being trapped. What am I? I don't like going with you now to the malls. Ngeti, why I'm kanyisi? No, because when we go with you to the mall, everyone stops you. They're like, oh, see the, see the, go on the foundation. And I looked at my son and I'm like, okay. Then my little daughter says, she's nine years Little daughter says, she's nine years old. She says, I like it. I like it when people stop mommy. I like it so much. So I'm trying to show you, Guti, when you love yourself, wherever you go, you have a presence. Mount Gena, I'm about to have to stop what they're doing and they have to look at you. But who is this one? Is she a politician? Mm-mm. It, no, she's an ordinary girl, but because she loves herself so much, it manifests and it flows over. Women, you are power. Women, you are beautiful. And let's advocate for 300. <clears throat> let's advocate for 365 days of activism against gender-based violence and femicide. Let's not only highlight it on the 16 days of activism. Every single day, let's continue. God bless you. Um, so thank you so much, um, Cecile. Thank you so much for educating us a lot about how if you cultivate your love for yourself, that will reflect outside, and that's how you'll treat other women that are also in your space. Um, however, going next to going to the next panelist, I'll be introducing an LGBTQIA plus activist um, of from Yokuruleni region. Um, he's 26 years old, IT graduate. He's, an, he's also an entrepreneur. He's the owner and founder of Elite Eatery and Chaudiso Cosmetics, um, Sidiso Budiba. I'm gonna use this. Uh, Amanda, away to? Amanda, away to? Viva EFF Viva. Viva! Viva EFF Viva. Viva! Long live to the spirit of Mama Winnie Matigizela Mandela. Long live. Long live to the spirit of Winnie Matigizela Mandela. Long live. Greetings to the house at large. I go by the name of Tidi Sobudibe. I am an LGBTQI activist from the Ekurleni region. I am a founder and owner of Elite Eatery and Tidi So Cosmetics. Uh, today, I chose a topic that I relate to, which is gen- gender discrimination. What is gender discrimination? It is when someone treat- is treated unequally or disadvantageous based on their gender, but not necessarily in a sexual nature. Uh, this includes harassment, discrimination based on sex, gender identity, or gender expression. What are the main issues of gender discriminations? Far too many girls, especially those from the poorest families, still faces gender discrimination in education, child marriage and pregnancy, uh, sexual violence and unrecognized domestic work. These are some type of gender inequality. Uh, We have four main types of gender discriminations, which are direct discrimination, indirect discrimination, um, harassment and victimization. Um, effects of gender discrimination in society. Uh, it can mean uh, an access to education, a lower standing in society, less freedom to make decisions around their family uh, lives or personal lives, and lower wages at jobs or work they do. Uh, how can we stop gender discrimination? We need to ensure equal access to education. We need to empower women in workplaces. We need to protect uh, productive rights, we need to strengthen uh, legal protection, we need to provide uh, better medical care, we need to achieve better political representation, like the EFF, guys. So, uh, 
I've been once a victim of gender discrimination where I was working because uh, they expected so much from me and they wanted me to not express my fully self. They wanted me to behave like a boy whilst I am a girl. Kistabani. <laughs> today. So uh, my advice to everyone, woman, whether gay, whether woman, is always stay true to yourself, always be yourself, love yourself, love others, support others, and support yourself. Thank you. Um, so, the next speaker we'll be introducing is a member of the CSCT, firstly, the CCT, sorry, the CCT, and secondly, they are an activist, they are a gender, G GBV activist, I'm so sorry guys, they're a GBV activist, number one, they are ground force because we always see them on the ground and they really care about the livelihoods of women in South Africa. They care about equal representation within leadership structures. They care about ensuring that the girl child receives adequate resources and adequate support to ensure that they are the best possible uh, citizens of this country. And personally, she's my favorite member of the CCT and I'll be introducing the DSG Poppy. Amanda, Matla, Viva, EFF, 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 Viva! Long live to our President and Commander in Chief, Julia Selo Malema. Long live! Long live to our Deputy President, Floyd Nico Shivambu. Long live! Long live to our Secretary General, Marshal Mzingisi Lamini. Long live. Long live. Long live to our National Chair, Veronica Mente. Long live. Long live. Long live to our Treasurer General, Umpile Mautwe. Long live. Long live. I rule EFF Mohauteng. I rule. I rule EFF Kotswane region. I rule. I rule EFF Johannesburg region. I rule. I rule EFF Kosidibeng region. I rule. I rule EFF Ekuruleni region. I rule. The other one, King. There's another region. I rule EFF Student Command. I rule. My cool EFF Student Command. My cool. My boy. Africa. My Africa. My boy. Africa. Africa. Long live to the undying spirit of Mama Winfred Matikizela Mandela. Long live. Long live. Long live to the undying spirit of Mama Winfred Matikizela Mandela. Long live. Long live. Amanda. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you very much, guys. Nyabonga, thank you very much to our beautiful program director. I'm very much excited and I'm happy to be here. Ketabile Kakudu. First and foremost, I want to take this time and say thank you very much to the team that have organized this event. It is a beautiful, beautiful event. I know very well the challenges of organizing an event to be a success. I know you'll face challenges of um, sound system not arriving in time and whatsoever, but you guys have done excellent. And all of you guys are looking very stunning and I'm happy that you are here today on this special occasion. I also want to greet the PCT members of Gauteng, all of them, and also greet all the regional command teams of Gauteng, and also greet all of you fighters from different wards where you are coming from. I also want to greet our communications team that are here today with us. Fighters. Today, as we gather here to commemorate Women's Month, we are reminded of the progress we have made in the fight for gender equality. However, it is important to acknowledge that there is still much work to be done. On behalf of the organization, I stand before you to address some critical issues that continues to affect women worldwide. One of the most pressing issue we face is domestic violence. It is a harsh reality that many, ex many women experience abuse within their own homes. We must raise our voice against this injustice and work towards creating safe spaces for all women. No one, no one should live in fear or endure violence behind closed doors. Another crucial point to address is the recognition that sex work is work. It is essential to challenge societal stigmas and provide support and protection for those engaged in this profession. By acknowledging sex work as a legitimate work, we can empower women and ensure their safety and well-being. Inclusion. It's a fundamental principle that should guide our efforts towards gender equality. We must strive to include all women in society, regardless of their race, ethnicity, and, or, and sexual orientation, or socioeconomic background. By embracing diversity and promoting inclusivity, we can create a more just and equitable world for all. Gender discrimination remains a significant barrier to progress. Women continue to face unequal treatment in various aspects of life, including employment opportunities, education, and decision-making processes. It is imperative that we challenge these discriminatory practices and advocate for equal rights and opportunities for all genders. Child abuse is another issue that demands our attention. We must protect our children from all forms of abuse and provide them with a nurturing environment where they can thrive. By investing in their well-being, we are investing in the future 
of our society. Poverty affects women, particularly single mothers and marginalized communities. We must address the root cause of poverty and work towards economic empowerment for all women by providing access to education, skills training, and financial resources. We can break the cycle of poverty and create a more equitable society. Gender-based violence. It's a grave violation of human rights that affects women worldwide. We must stand together to condemn all forms of violence against women, including sexual assault, harassment, and femicide. It is our collective responsibility to create a society where every woman feels safe and protected. Lastly, we must address the stigma surrounding HIV and AIDS. Women are disproportionately affected by this epidemic, and they often face discrimination and social exclusion. It is crucial to promote awareness, provide access to healthcare services, and challenge the stigma associated with HIV and AIDS. By doing so, we can ensure that all women receive support they need without fear of judgment or discrimination. In conclusion, Women's Month serves as a reminder of the progress we have made in advancing gender equality. However, it also reminds us of the challenges that lies ahead. Let us join hands and work together to eradicate domestic violence. Recognize sex work as work. Promote inclusivity. Combat gender discrimination. Protect children from abuse. Alleviate poverty and gender-based violence. And fight against HIV AIDS stigma. The Economic Freedom Fighters, our organization, is a political party in South Africa known for its strong advocacy of economic and social justice. When it comes to women issues, the EFF has taken a stance that aims to address systematic inequalities and discrimination faced by women. Here are some key points of the EFF position on women's issues. On gender equality, the EFF strongly believes in achieving gender equality in all spheres of society. They advocate for equal representation of women in leadership position, including government, politics, and business. The party emphasizes the importance of dismantling patriarchal system that perpetuates gender-based discrimination. On economic empowerment, the EFF recognized that economic empowerment is crucial for achieving gender equality. They advocate for policies that promote access to resources, land, and economic opportunities for women. The party support initiatives such as affirmative action and gender quotas to address historical imbalances and ensure women's participation in the economy. On gender-based violence, the EFF condemns all forms of gender-based violence and calls for stronger measures to protect women from abuse. We advocate for comprehensive legislation and policies that prioritize the safety and well-being of women, 
including harsher penalties for perpetrators of violence against women. In reproductive rights, the EFF supports women's right to make decisions about her own body, including access to safe and legal abortion services. We advocate for comprehensive sexual and reproductive health education and services, ensuring that women have control over their reproductive choices. On social welfare, the EFF recognized that many women face disproportionate levels of poverty and inequality. We advocate for social welfare programs that specifically target vulnerable groups, including single mothers, elderly women, and those living in rural areas. On education, the EFF emphasized the importance of quality education for all, including girls and young women. We advocate for policies that address barriers to education faced by girls, such as access to sanitary products and safe learning environments. It is important to note that, that a political parties' uh, position can evolve over time, and it is always best to refer to the most recent party manifestos and statements for the most accurate and up-to-date information on the stance on women issues. In many societies, women face cultural or traditional expectation that plays endure pressure on them to get married by a certain age. It is disheartening that if a woman reaches the age of 35 without being married, she may be subjected to derogatory names or societal judgment. Similarly, if a woman chooses not to have children or prioritizes her career over starting a family, she is often uh, unfairly labeled as heartless or not fulfilling her role as a complete woman. These cultural norms and custom create unnecessary burdens and restrict women's autonomy in making choices about their own lives. It is crucial that we challenge these stereotypes and support women in their decisions, whether it be marriage, motherhood, or pursuing their own aspirations. On a lighter note, it is unfortunate that women are often subjected to unfair labels when it comes to their personal choices, such as smoking or drinking alcohol. Society tends to label women as loose or make negative assumptions about their character based on these behaviors. It is important to recognize that women have the rights to make choices about their own bodies and lifestyle without facing judgment or prejudice. We should strive for a society that respects individual autonomy and does not unfairly stigmatize women based on their personal preferences. Now, when it comes to our organization, the EFF, in this organization, we have women that are very much intelligent and women who are doing excellent in whatever deployment or position that they are at. Phenomenal women. I'm talking about women in parliament. Look at all the members of parliament who are women, who are in committees, and they are doing great each and every day. Look at women who are deployed in local councils, mothers, single mothers, but every day they make sure that I must go and represent my organization in that council. No matter my child is sick or I've got other personal problems. Recently, our achievement as the woman in the EFF, we have a speaker in Ekuruleni. We must recognize her. 
We recognize our speaker and Guruleni. We are inspired by her. She is our true reflection. That no matter what happens, no matter what might happen in the organization, always be yourself. Always stand true for what is important to you. And also, our other MMCs that we have in the organization, we must also appreciate them. It must be challenging that today you are a counselor. The next morning you are an MMC. That takes a lot. And you, it, it makes you, when you get home, to sit down and say, am I capable? Would I be able to manage? And at that time, you have other sisters in the organization that are rooting for your failure. There's nothing as painful as yourself doing what you want to do, doing your best every day with your background that you come from. Then you have people that will come and call you names and tell you that you are stupid. You cannot be able to do this. And they don't understand what you went through. What Ukwanele was saying is very much important. And as the woman in the EFF, we must take that to heart. We are not fighting men in the EFF. We must fight ourselves. We must fight ourselves. And what I recognize and what I acknowledge and what I pray for every day is that we are powerful. You being yourself, playing your role, it might be in your what? It might be in your community, it might be in your church, it might be in your stock fell. By being true to yourself and fighting whatever that might happen every day, you are giving us permission to also rise and stand up. What I want to tell you, Makoskas, what God has gave you, I want to say now, no one can take it away from you. No one, no one can steal your dream. No one can steal your vision. No one can steal your destiny. They can do what they want to do, whenever they want to do it, wherever they want to do it. But if God has given that to you, only you can be able to execute it precisely like it is. So I want you women today to stand up. You are failing us. You are failing us by playing small. You are failing us by playing dumb. Of course, we are in the EFF and this is politics. I will speak about it right now. When it comes to the issue that our organization must find capable women to come lead in the front, I What is the worst that could happen? The worst has already happened in your life. You were called names. You were labeled is fair. They said dead and dead. They said you slept with this one, you slept with that one. So why not take all of that and build yourself? Yeah. This organization, the revolution needs us. Yeah. We are the ones that are going to take this revolution to the next level. Yeah. No one, comrade, no one is going to fight our battles. We must fight it. Some of our battles need itolo panty. Kuleke uval ungene kamare. And call the higher power. Some of our issues need counseling. You must go. Some of our issues need you to cough it out. Ukulume, you must do it. So that when the time comes, when your name is called, you are ready and you are equipped. So, comrade, this is what I wanted to share with you. Let's rise. 
Let's rise to that level. Let's be, let's do everything in our power. Because without us, this organization wouldn't be where it is today. Yeah. 99% of the women fighters have played a crucial and a critical role in building this organization where it is today. And we must be proud of that. We must be proud of that. From 2013, there are women in this organization that have been there. Now comes the time, comrade. What is said is that we only have such sittings only on Women's Month. Why are we not having dialogues like this, sessions like this, on a daily basis? Come I tell you, we don't have a women's command. We don't have a women's platform. We do not have a women's structure. We do not have a women's desk. We don't have a women's structure, a command. And we are scared of talking about it. We are very much scared. Because how about what the position? Unyaka yena. But that is not true. Because understanding very well, Lord, when you start a structure, you are the one that are going to take all the rubbish, the failures, the mistakes. We want to build for our children. I'm turning 14 now, next year. I want that by the time I leave my position, I should have made a mark. I should have laid a foundation so that whoever comes after me would be able that the Mbogoto that was here, yeah. she has done it. Yeah. So all of those things, comrade, that is what I am pleading with you. And also I'm pleading, guys, within ourselves, in our branches or anything, let's support each other. Yeah. Comrade, let's try. Let's try and support each other in everything that we do. We are going through a lot as women, but we also must understand Hore, others are going through a lot. Let's be gentle. Let's be gentle with each other. Let's make oh Mamu Shalot Makeke. All those women who stood up and said, You telling us about segregation, telling us Hore, we can we must carry this at whatever time, we must be where at whatever time. We must make them proud. We must make Mama Winnie proud that women stood for rejection, stood for all kind of names and everything when everybody was saying, you are nothing. She stood the family so until her last day. We must make her proud in everything that we do. Thank you very much and thank you very much.
Thank you so much once more, DSG, for that address. Are you guys not inspired, Mara, for us to keep on doing more? Aye. Aye. Yeah, we need to constantly show up and have these discussions and empower each other as women. And it's really sad, Hore, in the little time that we have, we also need to discuss the contradictions that we have in ourselves. Sorry, we are our own worst enemy, you know, which is something that really, really needs to stop. We need to empower each other. And again, the question of the icebreaker comes back. Yaori, what, what does it mean to empower yourself and to empower others? This is it, guys. Like, let's, let's do it, you know? When you see a woman in leadership positions, it's easy to just see this is just a pretty face, this is what not. You don't see what another person has to offer. So let's give each other a chance. Yeah. Let us just go crazy and demand things because this is our organization as well. So thank you so much for the address that you gave us. Um, we are about to invite another powerhouse who is one of the women that uh, Mama was talking about, Hore, we have really proper representation across structures in parliament. When women in the EFF show up, they show up, yeah. you know? So we are going to introduce Naledi Chirwa, who is a member of the Gauteng PCT yes. and a member of parliament. Uh, may you please come with us. Amanda! 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 Viva EFF, 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 Viva! Viva Mfazo Mnyama, Viva! Viva Ntombe Mnyama, Viva! Sia itati Azania, Sia itata! Sia itati Azania, Sia itata! Foot tag is it going to foot tag? Foot tag is it going to foot tag? Foot tag, foot tag, foot tag. 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 Amanda, Amanda, Amanda. Thank you so much. Sanbonani Nonke. Saubona TSG. Thank you so much for being with us, Namsanji. And Tanukbonga Futi with all the structures that are present today. I'm a PCT members that are present, different RCT members, Abazi and Namsanji. And obviously, most importantly, the Johannesburg RCT for organizing this gathering for Raman Besmam and Namsanji. Ika Malamuna Lady Nukanya Chirwa. So sometimes, like, I use that surname. <laughs> but sometimes I'm rebellious. I'm like, no, my surname is Chirwa. <laughs> you know, um, but thank you so much for having me with you guys. I don't take it for granted. Organizing is a very big job, to be honest with each other. At least in a issue. is a big job. To say go and show up for somebody at a court case is a big job. 
But people never get to see the kinds of struggles that we go through behind doors, right? And it's so amazing that we have these platforms to vent out, to distress, and also to call each other out. We've got our own issues amongst ourselves, right? And I think it's important that we call each other out as well uh, because that is the only way you are able to build. Right? Right? But Mark Shoni we kaya gusa boban. Gupila boban. Ukulma kaboban. If you go on your period and any place at any moment, uya guban. Mawe police station, utuwa ujwenguli wa oru patwega bekaya. Ukali poisa loban. Pau figa na ses pekela. You are more comfortable with a gynecologist who's a what? Exactly. So even these lies that people keep telling us are to strip us of our unity and our solidarity. And why is that important? Why is it important that we are not united? It's important because when you are not united, you can't agree on who the enemy is. And I see it a lot in, in, in the country especially, with young people, with women, with black people, the inability to agree on who the enemy is. And that is why FNB was so important. That is why that chant was so important. Because subliminally, a hundred thousand black people agreed on who the enemy is. Subconsciously. Even if you are a man, you are a man. 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 You are a and we must appreciate that whichever way we are, right? But that moment was significant because we were able to agree on something. That is why it's also important for us to agree on who the enemy is as women. Right? And we've got these lessons even ideologically in the party that we are in. Ulenin ukulmangoguti. For you to be able to get public sympathy you must have been able to organize yourselves amongst yourselves and to decide on who the enemy is. So I'm not going to be long because the day she already spoke, she gave me permission to come on the podium. Uh, I'm just making the disclaimer. Orange Farm, I have to go do a donation on behalf of the GBV desk to an organization, Itosunga, Etilangama GBV victims. So I came very early and then I left. Um, because I had to go uh, uh, finish that engagement and come back here. I forgot to make the disclaimer in the beginning, so I'm remembering now. As kissing if kuna ba kupi se gilore hape ora midi and lola ne de ver langiz. Nizo bedinga kamba manga. So I'm just making the disclaimer. So we're on the same page, and then ahoba ni du kupi asker. Are we okay? So Lenin makes this deliberation and says, "You must choose firstly who the enemy is." You must organize yourselves amongst yourselves and then you must decide if you're going for peace or for war. So when young girls are being raped and their court cases are being thrown out of court because good you are evidence but a child is dead, is that peace or war? What do we decide as black women if our wasu kibili takes if there's not other women in the taxi? Is that peace or war? When you can't get the same salary as your male counterpart doing the same job, having the same qualifications, in the same company, is that peace or war? war. And yet we have not made that decision as black women in South Africa, regardless of everything that we are facing and that we are struggling with. It is important, even if on days, you know sometimes you don't want to be a feminist, ne? Am I lying? I'm not lying, ne? Sometimes you're like, hey, that's me. I get, oh yeah, like, hey, this is too much for me. Ne? But what we ought to remember is that if it were not for other women who did it, even when it was uncomfortable, we would not be here. Especially, especially as socialist feminists. In maternity leave, it did not fall from the sky. Ugusu, you can give birth and stay at home and not go to work and be paid. It did not fall from the sky. Women had to exist and fight for that right. For your girl child, Ugusu, this party is a fan of 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 a f
It did not come from the sky. There were women who had to exist and fight that. That women don't have access to education from any childhood development. Feminists had to exist for that to be normal today. Early childhood development. Ooh, you know, socialist are so, actually so beautiful. Socialist feminists actually ba frame is struggle saba fazi according to economics, right? So actually, we understand that as economic freedom fighters, we understand why we are socialists. We understand the uh, the class struggle. We understand that we are part of the proletariat, right? The basics, right? And now the feminists, the socialist feminists, says, how do we translate this to the struggles of our women? Ne? And then they say, if the woman is the one that is the head in the domestic, uh, 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 domestic sphere, domestic in Shekhaya, ne? Dala, women had businesses in their own home, by the way. Bebenza in Zipo and Lini, Betunga Marketings, Betunga in Bata, Yonki the City and Amajuma factories were actually being done in the home. And then industrialization happened, ne? They took away the economic hub of the domestic house and put it Guma factories. And then above that, they then locked women out from working in those factories and put men and immigrants in those factories. That is how women become economically isolated. That is our history with how we get stripped of our economic power. Right? That is how you get Uti. There is an understanding of It didn't come from anywhere. Vela were working in the home, but the home had money. So when the EFF comes in and says, no, we must pay domestic work, you think maybe there's a bit of confusion. No, 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 no. It's a historical understanding of the fact that even the home is an economic hub. And even worse, even our big corporations, governments, and businesses, they benefit from stay-at-home moms. An example. Ne? You give birth. Ne? So now you are creating labor. You are creating the labor force for these institutions. You birth it, you raise it, you clothe it, you feed it. In fact, who then gets more time to deal with these laborers? It's these institutions from whose hands? From your hands as a woman. So even the act of getting a child ready for school, you're actually making a contribution to the labor force 10 years or 15 years from then. That is why socialist feminists come in and say, no, no, no. Then the government that benefits from the work of our hands in our kitchens, in our homes, in our bedrooms, must subsidize our children to go to school. Yeah. <laughs> So it's not because the government loved us so much. It's not because there were people who were in power who loved women so much. They're like, no, marangwana kasi patali 1,000, go skolong ha patali 300, go kreching. It's because feminists had to exist. It's because they had to decide economically, how do we make the struggle of education easier? Ang shi kala nga excess. I kala nga excess bang genema kate in the skolong matona mato mazana, nishu. And then from then onwards, you say, no, 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 there's a disjuncture here because now you've taken our money from our homes. Yes, you've put the girl child in school, but we can't afford the child in school. What then do we ask for? We ask for the fact that you must subsidize those schools, right? And then the EFF comes in and says, companies must, have a, must pay a 5% education tax. Do you remember that era during fees must fall? Ne? Come in and say, companies must pay a 5% uh, 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 education tax. Ne? And then Google and I about this gang line, but hi, I'm a company and get a gun channel. Because those people who are they studying to work for, and who must pay to build laborers for these people? It must be us. We must raise them, take them to school, take them to university, and then buy your seven zelani in a Coca Cola. They will not know unfair. So that is why when we demand the things that we demand as women, in fact, we're not demanding enough as women. We're not demanding enough. Women are from now on, I see maternity leave. I see this in nine months. Now, boy, na ne? La chalo hanya why giri be awas giri. Rada chalo hanya giri. We know the true cost of that, right? And then women are still begging, I see. 
even this thing of equal pay, I don't think it makes sense because who works better, guys? I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying, ne? Honestly, come on, nitin, 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 nit. Lo, I'm going to make you go how? How the hell am I supposed to go how? How the hell do I tie this up? When I open a hole, when I open a hole, when I open a hole, I'm better. I'm not lying, right? Putin is sure. I didn't say anything. I asked you the question and you answered. Again, how is it that Tabiso is earning 27% more than you? We are not angry enough. And being angry is tiresome, right? Tons are changes. And again, Mara Heri changes and Nara Jajana. Homongatse are breaking in a two minutes. Our then she must die. Again, how can I have your motor bill? I bill a unka break, you know, because Musebezi Obuima Obuima. So we must start demanding even more than what we are demanding now. And the nice thing about demanding more is that when you finally negotiate, you fall down on fairness. So I receive banana banana. I receive an equal pay. No, I don't now we want pay according to how far you have gone. Yeah. If you go from first round to first round, then you must get your first round money. There must be money allocated for each round and for each goal. And then you see that our fight for equal pay, even the roba. Because there's absolutely no way Posha Mudisa, who's the highest goal scorer in the continent, must earn the same amount of money as Simpiwa Chabalala, who is not. <laughs> so now we must principalize levels. Principalize levels. And in other ways, we call it equity, right? So now we get so focused on equality and forget that the women before us were fighting for equity. Equity means that to standardize is not enough. You must add on top for reparation. You must add for restoration. You must add for recuperation. The three R's. So I'm going to try one thing before I sit down. I know I can talk forever. So I'm going to save all of us from myself. Ne? Look at the person next to you and say, I love you. Okay, Ari, 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 I think it's a lot. 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 Oh, God, I'm going to go. Anyway, Ari, neighbor. 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 I love you so much. I love you so much. You know, for the first time ever, ne? for the first time ever I've been doing this exercise, it's for the first time it is as loud as it is today. Wow. And that must be evidence of something. We do what we do because of love. Yeah. Nothing else. A standing of father, but no matter if you are not even there, when they talk about you, they defend you. And you never get to find out. You never get to know what Usban Ban Utamabati. Hey, happen na lady are not when I'm here. Or I I show an line at a good and sebo. Or wasuguma ahamba. But we do what we do because of love. Again, because we do not agree that it is our children, ours. No other race goes through the stuff that we go through. We are always at the firing line. So when you are always at the firing line, how do you fire back? You love. You love. 
You love when it's hard. You love when it's not simple. You love when you can't continue anymore. You love while you are judging the person. And you love them still. You love them still. Can we do it for the last time? Because we but there's a reason, right? And the reason is that we need women to be more radical. You cannot be radical if you can't even own your own body. If you feel that your body is a shame. If you feel that things associated to your body are a shame. Ne? And this chant is about agency. It's about autonomy. So when we speak about sexual reproductive health rights, we mean when I hope at the termination of pregnancy, you should be able to get it. Whether you, I agree with you morally or not, that's not the debate. I can't debate with you about your body. So when we do this chant, we are silencing the debates about our bodies. Galasugumen. I apologize in advance. Ne? Ne? But you must do everything I do. But I apologize in advance. Mumta no spete la sega kulu. Ne? Ene bom me ban rata so asur ka letela. Okay. So you're gonna repeat after me, right? Yeah. With the actions and everything. Yeah. Ne? Yeah. <laughs> this is my vagina. This is my vagina. This is my vagina. This is my vagina. It doesn't belong to my boyfriend. It doesn't belong to my boyfriend. It doesn't belong to my girlfriend. It doesn't belong to my girlfriend. It doesn't belong to my church. It doesn't belong to my church. It doesn't belong to my family. It doesn't belong to my family. It doesn't belong to my political party. It doesn't belong to my political party. It belongs to me. It belongs to me. It belongs to me. This is my vagina. This is my vagina. I can do whatever I want to do with it. can do whatever I want to do with it. It belongs to me. It belongs to me. It belongs to me. It belongs to me. This is my vagina. Amanda.
Na lady. Yo. Wow. 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 Can we please have one more round of applause? Wow. Okay. Um, thank you so, so much for that. And the exercise was so empowering. Yeah. Because, like, yeah, it's, it's, very, it's very, very empowering because we never get to speak about our bodies like that, yeah. to own them like that, you know? It's always, even when, when men speak about, during um, conversations of gender-based violence, they always say, Hore, we are protecting our women and all of that. So it's always our, 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 you know? We are like a possession. And it, it's so empowering, Hore, re owning our bodies like that. So. Thank you so much again. Um, okay. Um, we are going to need a bit of a breather now. That was very, very intense. And we've been here for some time. So we are going to have a break now. And lunch is going to be served. And then after that, we are going to go on with the rest of our panel discussion, in, introduce our panel members, and then go on with the rest of the program. So they are going to bring the lunch to us. Ten years, and God only. 